so this is my storage server here and currently it runs Ubuntu and I like to change that I'm gonna switch it over to run TrueNAS scale this was the lowest cost ITX motherboard I could get like five years ago and it used to run FreeNAS and now it's gonna run TrueNAS again so in some point in the past I upgraded the server so that it could do more than just host storage and I've updated it a couple times now it's got a Ryzen 3400G but now that I'm using Proxmox instead of bare Ubuntu I don't need this much power in my storage server so I'm gonna change it back to run the old AMD A10 which will be just fine for running my ZFS pool Here's a bit of a view of the inside. So this is actually a Pico PSU here, which is designed for, it's powered by this little brick over here. You can see there's a brick that's held in there with double-sided tape, and I got my two hard drives, which are both 6 terabyte WD reds, and this is my ZFS mirror. Today I'm going to add this drive, which is a 5 terabyte Seagate desktop drive um, that I've had for quite a, quite a large number of years and I haven't done anything with it. It's never been used. I mean, I formatted it, but after that I didn't use it, so I decided I'm going to put it in here and use it as a secondary pool. I know it's not recommended to put ZFS on a, a single drive, but I'm going to do it anyway. So in addition to these three drives, I got a 240 gig SSD that's going to hold the operating system. So this is the network card I upgraded to. It's an Intel X520 DA, which is a PCI Gen 2 10 gigabit card. So there's network card. So this is going to stay in the PF or the TrueNAS server. Now the motherboard needs to come out. I didn't put a lot of the screws in at the time because it was too hard to get to. So I guess that's good now. Okay, we got the motherboard out. From what I recall, I have to take the motherboard out in order to... disconnect anything from it. Okay. The motherboard is coming out. Another reason to add the 5 terabyte drive by itself, because I'm going to need, I only have four SATA ports on the new board. I only had four on this board anyway. One of them is going to be used by my OS drive. So that leaves me with three. I have my existing mirror, which is two. And I can't really upgrade that from a mirror to a RAID Z nor would I necessarily want to. So now my Ryzen board is free. What are we stuck on here? Dino Shield. Mini ITX is such a nice form factor to build with. So that's going in. I got one more screw on the motherboard. Now I can put the network card back in. And the Pico PSU can go in. There's the EPS connector. Okay, so we read the manual. Power and reset go there. Power LED minus. Power LED plus. So SATA 1 is going to be my boot drive. Yeah, I'll put you in there. Man, that's tight. So it's getting to be too dark to film, but I got the system it's hooked up. I am imaging a new USB stick with the latest version of TrueNAS Scale, and I will come back to you when I have it running. Okay, so TrueNAS Scale has been installed. It booted up, and its IP address is .35. So let's log in. So we got this nice getting started page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've actually used TrueNAS Scale before in a virtual machine, not in a physical system, and um, pretty great. So now we're going to set up our pools. So first I need to import a pool. It 
Let's see what happens when it imports it. Okay, here we go. So these are all my data sets that I had before. I'm gonna I'm gonna rearrange these a little bit, but the data is here, the data is imported. So I'm gonna create another pool, and it's gonna be my unsafe pool. And it's gonna use just the one drive, the five terabyte. And it's very, very discouraging of using only one drive. But we are going to do it anyway. That's why we named it unsafe. And we're going to use the unsafe pool for stuff that we don't need to back up. Or, I mean, RAID is not a backup. So we have two options for the unsafe pool. It's a single 5 terabyte drive versus the safe data pool, which is a 6 terabyte mirror. So on the unsafe pool, I'm going to put my security cameras because that data gets refreshed basically continuously. And in general, it's essentially worthless unless I actually need to go back and look at it. I'm also going to put backups on the 5 terabyte pool, so that's place, that's data that I have somewhere else, and the second copy is stored on the unsafe pool that doesn't have redundancy. So that'll give me a little bit more space to fit stuff than just the 6 terabyte redundant pool. So it looks like the system is up and running, so now I just got to set all my shares up how I like them. So you might be wondering, why did I just do all this work to take out this nice, relatively modern processor? and replace it with that old AMD A10. Well, TrueNAS doesn't really need that much power for the size of disks I have. I'm not running in RAID-Z, and I'm only using 10 gigabit Ethernet, so it's not like that much bandwidth is running through the system. And, more importantly, I wanted this hardware back, because it's nice, and I have a project coming up involving GPU pass-through. So uh, stay tuned for this project, because it's coming in the next few weeks. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.